everyone, I'm Michelle from A Common Life and I'm the homeschooling mom of five children. Two of my children have a sensory processing disorder, so I have joined my friend Tanya from Project Happy Home and we're gonna be giving you guys tips every Friday on how to deal with sensory processing disorder and for her videos, they're gonna be about ADHD. So let's go ahead and get into the video. that you have been watching this series of videos, I'm gonna go ahead and link to the series up here so that you can go ahead and start at the very beginning. In the first video, I explained uh, basically a little bit about our family and about our children and how we handle this sensory processing disorder within our family. And so I also give you one tip that week as well. And now this week, I'm gonna give you tip number two, and that tip is preparation. Now, when you have children with a sensory processing disorder or children that are just a little bit inflexible and have a hard time going from one thing to another, the most important thing to do is to prepare them ahead of time. Now, I don't necessarily tell my children way ahead of time if we're doing things. If we have maybe a play date or we're gonna be going to the store, I let them know about an hour or so before we do that activity. I don't let them know the day before or earlier that day. It's just about an hour or so before we're gonna go. And then during that hour, I will slowly give them warnings. So I'll start with an hour and I'll say, in an hour, we're going to go to the store. And then I'll say, in 45 minutes, we're gonna to go to the store. And then I'll say, in a half hour, we're gonna to go to the store. Now you need to get your shoes on, get dressed, whatever you need to do to get out the door. Because when children have sensory processing disorders, a lot of times these things just take a little bit longer. Maybe they don't like wearing socks. Maybe they need to wear socks that day. So you're gonna kind of get in a little bit of a um, trouble spot there. And so, you know, there's different times when something as simple as just like getting out the door and putting shoes on is actually gonna be very difficult. So you have to prepare ahead of time that those types of things are gonna happen. So for me, what I always do is I make sure that a half an hour before we need to leave, I'm getting my kids ready. Now, when you have a child who is very prone to meltdowns or just general agitation, getting out the door, which may seem like a simple thing, is very, very difficult. And so I always give myself that extra 30 minutes just so that we have that buffer of time so that we're not late. And honestly, that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm always early everywhere we go, because I would rather be early than be late. To go along with that, I always have everything ready ahead of time. That means at least two hours or even the night before, I will pack whatever we need, add an extra change of clothes, um, just anything that we might need for that day. I will have it done way ahead of time because when you have children with sensory processing disorders, you never know when they're gonna have a meltdown and you never know when things are basically just gonna fall apart. And if you're not ready ahead of time, that means that everything is gonna be very, very difficult as you're trying to get out the door or get somewhere. So I always prepare everything way ahead of time. I will even go ahead if we're um, going to church or somewhere where they need to be wearing a certain outfit, I will lay those out ahead of time. That way I don't even have to think about it in the morning because the less I have to think about, the more I can just focus on helping that child and being more patient and calm because if mommy's stressed, they're gonna know that and then they're gonna kind of respond to that. And also if I'm stressed, I'm not gonna react in a good way. So that's why I always try to do everything way ahead of time. In addition to all of that, another thing is just to always make sure that your child is well fed and has had a drink and has gone to the bathroom. These are three very simple things, but with a child with a sensory processing disorder, they feel like they're starving and they feel like they're dying of thirst if they don't have, a, have food or a drink. And if they have to go to the bathroom with our younger son, he has to go now. I mean, he has to go immediately. And a lot of times it maybe takes a little bit longer or it's just a little bit more difficult depending on the child. And so those types of things need to be done ahead of time. That way the kid is ready to go. Now, once you're out in a public place, one of the things that I never realized before I had kids with special needs, but you need to basically be prepared to leave. And I know that sounds really strange because you're going somewhere and you wanna be prepared to do things there and have a good time. But when you have a kid with a sensory processing disorder, they're very easily overwhelmed. And if that happens, they may have a panic attack or a meltdown. And if that happens, you will need to get out the door as fast as you can. 
Now for a mother like myself, I have five children. So that means I'm going to have four other children there who need to be able to get out the door with me. And so when that happens, I always make sure I know where the exits are. I know where a bathroom is, or I know somewhere that we can go if we need to. And then on top of that, if the child is having a panic attack or a meltdown, I will assign jobs to the older children. I will say, okay, you take care of your little brother. You grab my purse and I'll pick up the kid and I will, you know, go out the door. And so I just always am prepared that this might happen. And if it does, it's okay. It's just a part of life and you just have to go with it. As you may know, I'm a homeschooling mom and a lot of people have asked questions about how do you do uh, homeschool with children with sensory processing disorders. Now, honestly, doing homeschool with a child with a sensory processing disorder, in my mind, is much better than sending that child to public school where they are just kind of just having things thrown at them all the time, all the noise, all the other kids, um, even the smells and all the different things going on. And they will come home and in, in our situation, when our son went to public school, he would come home and have panic attacks. He was just so overwhelmed and he'd kind of been holding it in all day long. And when he finally got home, he would literally have a panic attack. He would have not be able to breathe. And it was really scary. And so for us, Homeschooling is a much better option. If our child is feeling really overwhelmed, I will sometimes just say, stop what you're doing. We're gonna take a break for a second and we'll come back to it. And for our younger son, he's having one of those um, bad days or off days. Sometimes he won't even do school that day. And we'll just kind of make up for it as we go along. Because if he is just going to fight and struggle and feel overwhelmed, it's just, it's not worth it to put that extra stress on him. And so I would rather just hold off and then do the lesson the next day and just kind of pick up as we go along. Because the wonderful thing about homeschooling is that even if you skip a day, it's really easy to make up for it in the following days. You can spread it out over time or you can just do two lessons back to back. Depends on the child, depends on the day. But for me, I find that homeschooling children with sensory processing disorders is definitely better than sending them to public or private school. I prefer this. I know from experience what it was like to send my children to public school and to see how much they struggled and how hard it was. And I see even now, if we go to um, just a simple event with a homeschool group or even a birthday party or um, you know an event at a museum or something like that, they're very easily overwhelmed. And these events are you know only a couple of hours and yet at the end of it, they're completely drained. And so I just prefer the homeschool option. I just think that really works better for us. Those are just a few of my tips regarding preparation when it comes to homeschooling and living with a child with a sensory processing disorder. I hope that this helped you a little bit. If you have any questions, please don't forget to put them down in the comments below. And if you enjoy these videos, I'm gonna be posting them every Friday. So make sure you go ahead and click that red subscribe button. And um, if you click the bell next to it, you'll be notified of any of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and don't forget to check out Tanya's channel, Project Happy Home. She's gonna be talking about ADHD with her and how she deals with that with her son. So don't forget to go check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.